Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to, um... It's been a few days since I did a Monster Spotlight, so I decided to do another Monster Spotlight. So, welcome to the Light Valk Monster Spotlight. Um, so, we have here... I actually had a, f a lot of people on my, on my list that were queuing up for Monster Spotlight, but I... I should have invited them before, but then, then again, my friend list is like constantly always full. Um, I'm sure there is this as well, because they're trying to get as many people as they can to like farm all the Guardian dungeons for um, for the D'Artanians. I'm digressing so much, but like uh, my, my point is, we I, I had to go down the list and try to find someone. So if I like skipped you, just uh, send me another e invite and uh, switch your rep then I, I can like I can always go back to you so I went down the list found the first guy that um, had their rep ready and everything so this is um, Captain Cola and his light Valk. now I decided to do this test with two morale boosters plus the armor breaker um, I think this is a pretty common comp I, I run for tests when I'm testing on a light unit because they can this can show the damage um, that the light unit can do to the dark units in B10 as well as um, the potential for that light unit to tank. All right, so this this light valk here is um, is built for PvP and she's basically on full tank. This is definitely the way I would recommend. Um, building her for for PvP. Well, actually, I would probably go double HP instead of double defense. But you want to go more defensive for PvP because um, she is a balance type, so she's relatively tanky. She has a little bit of attack. I think it's like 2,900 base. It's not too high, but um, because of Predator, she's actually able to do a little bit of damage when she gets her active off, and her shock's also very very annoying in PvP if she does actually land it. So you just want to basically make her tanky, give her high defense, and she will, like, she's going to be pretty annoying. So if they try to kill her, um, she's going to be hard to kill because she's built tanky. And if they ignore her, then she also has the shock, potential to shock, as well as do a lot of damage. Well, not a lot, but like a, a handsome amount of damage to the enemy. Um, so he has her built on a broken set, which is completely fine. Uh, this one has crit, crit, crit damage, has 22% resist. Um, this one's got 25% resist, also a bit of attack, and all, all four of these stats were good, so this is like a pretty good gem. Um, this one's got 17% resist, a little bit of crit rate, some attack as well, so he he's basically uh, trying to boost her attack up a little bit through substats, so she's able to do a little bit of damage, which is uh, which is definitely ideal, so this is definitely a pretty pretty well built um, light valk. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna we're gonna test her out. Um, I think she's also going to be able to, to solo tank. A lot of people were concerned because um, I, I often show that Light Odin is able to solo tank B10, but they, you know, some people didn't maybe pick the Light Arthur or the Light Valk, and they're 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 kind of concerned about that. I don't think a Light Arthur can solo tank because he's quite squishy, but I think a Light Valk can definitely do it. I also went in without a leader skill. Um, just to make things a little bit more fair because I don't want to give her any unfair advantages when I'm when I'm showcasing her So I basically um, went in without any leader skills at all All right, well uh, first things first. We're gonna do two tests. We're gonna test out her damage on the bees and um, I'll, I'll armor break the bee on the second turn. Actually, I can armor break this bee right now All right, well, we'll, we'll hit the non armor broken bee and see how much damage she does and have all four of these units hit her Alright, it's three hits of like 3k, uh, three hits of like 3.7k, which, um, I mean, I, I, it's not too bad. It's not too bad for a monster that's built full tank, you know, like, literally, she doesn't have a single attack gem on her. Um, and she is definitely really, really tanky, as you, as you can see, she's able to take those, uh, you know, take those hits relatively well. And I'm gonna have her hit the armor broken one, we can see how much damage she does on the armor break. Um, basically double, double of, double the damage from before, and I think it's pretty nice because, um, especially like if you can in a in PVP if she, like she lands a shock they lose a turn. Um, she's also able to do a little bit of damage, so she's somewhat threatening if you if you just leave her alone. She's eventually gonna kill or wear down other units if they they don't have any sort of healing. Um, all right. We'll, we'll just put the armor break on the uh, on the moonflower. Yeah, she's she's just tanking this like a boss. That was a crit, about 10k a hit um, on armor break. So yeah, if you if you in PvP you pair her up with something like a like a fire Odin with Leo, 
um, and it does land an armor break, and she's hitting the armor broken unit. She's definitely going to be able to do quite a quite a lot of damage. Um, maybe not as much as aggressors, but she does have the utility as well to land the shock, which makes her pretty threatening. Um, and now, now that she has her active up, we're going to try out her active. Now, her active is Predator, so I think it's definitely going to do um, quite a lot of damage. Before we do that, I'm going to just heal up just in case she's she's dying. Uh, she doesn't she doesn't solo tank as well as Light Odin because Light Odin actually has the heal, um, but she she's able to do it if you if you actually pair her up with another monster with some sort of recovery, um, you know maybe like a passive healer or something like that. So we're gonna we're gonna test this out. Um, I'll armor break one of the sparklers and see if she's actually able to one shot this this thing, or at least uh, do half of the bar or see how much damage it does on the uh, on the sparkler. Alright, that was like 5 hits of 10k, so that was like a 50k um, crit on armor break. A against dark, obviously, but uh, you know, that's actually pretty good because um, a lot of people are, are actually running like dark defenses, although a lot of people are running light now because there's, there's a lot of really good light attackers, but the, the old school guys are still running like, you know, dark Atitos, dark, uh, dark Mona, dark Sarah, dark Kana, dark, not dark Kana, dark, uh, Mari, Mari, yeah, the Mari, Mari was it. Um, the ones with like morale boost and stuff. And very, very soon we're gonna have like the Dark Seedlers. So they're kind of like I think we're gonna be bring back the Dark Meta very, very soon. I, I think once the once the Seedlers come out. Um, so she definitely does counter those teams because she's a light unit, and light units will always um, target the dark units first, which makes her pretty threatening in, in PvP. So definitely a definitely a solid choice, I think. Um, I often get asked the question like, "Hey, uh, actually, before some people would ask me like if they could reset their contract or uh, you know like they, they really regret picking something." Um, I don't think it really matters all that much because the the units that you pick for your contract doesn't really affect your progression. They're mostly for like PvP, um, you know. Uh, yeah, mostly for PvP. I think all three of those monsters are, are, are mainly for PvP. And you don't really need them for progression. You could argue that you could get Light Odin for, for Golem's V10, but most people at level 45 are already able to farm Golem's V10. So you shouldn't worry too much about which one which one you pick. You should just pick the one you like. Um, it's not really going to affect your game all that much. But if you do have that monster and you invest... Um, the gems in those monsters, you'll you'll have a light valve like this one, and she'll be she'll be really really good for uh, for all PVP situations. You know she she does do quite a lot of damage for a monster built on full tank. Just look at look at how much damage she's doing to the boss on armor break. Actually, that's about like four percent, but still. It doesn't seem like a lot in PvE because you want to use like mostly attackers and stuff to kill like the golems. Like if you compare this to like the Radis team or something, um, it's you know it's it's in incomparable. But if in PvP, um, if you're especially on defense, if your monsters aren't tanky, they're just gonna get killed on the first turn. So like you you need to be able to do damage as well as um, as well as take damage at the same time. And she definitely does do that very, very well. So I think that's one of her strong points. This uh, Golem Speed 10 boss does have a, a lot of armor as well, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit hard to take him down, especially um, with most most of these monsters being support monsters and you know her being a like a full tank monster thor is built on like you know two offensive gems but it's not it's gonna take a while the good thing about her is her her gem requirement is not very high you don't need like any special gems to make her really good like you know you don't need to have high crit or, or uh, I guess high resist always works well in PvP. But you don't really, well, you, you kind of do need it because, or else you just get stunned, armor broken, and die. Um, but that's that's like a requirement for everybody. But besides that, she has no real requirements for gems. She doesn't need crit. She doesn't need re really much of anything. So you can 
pretty much just gem her any way you want. She doesn't require you to put her on pugilist or anything like that. Um, and she still she still does very, very well. So that's I think she's definitely a really good monster. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's it for the uh, Light Valk Monster Spotlight. I think this video was a little bit short, but then again, all Monster Spotlights kind of are. Um, but yeah, that was pretty fun. I'm going to get back to farming the dogs for like two two last days before it, before the event ends and you know maybe i'll have enough for one more maybe not if if not i can always use them for next month's rebirth but that's pretty much it so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out